Hey guys, this video is going to be about um, how to fully evaluate the heart to know that if you're at risk or not. Um, still, the number one reason that people are dropping dead in America is heart attacks, heart disease, heart failure, etc. So I know cancer is the big bag C word and the one we fear the most, um, but heart attacks is still the number one killer. And especially when you add strokes on top of it, which is the same disease process, the, the number just goes up. So number one way that you're most likely going to die is from a heart attack. So that should be where you put a lot of your focus because you don't want to die, I'm assuming, and you want to live a healthy lifestyle. Now, um, there's a lot of different ways to test the heart in different aspects, look at the heart health, and one of my pet peeves is when someone comes to tell me and says, oh, my doctor says my heart is as strong as a horse, and I ask them, well, what did he do to test that, that heart? Um, and it's something like, oh, he did an EKG and said it was fine. So that's not quite fully true. Um, the heart has a lot of different ways to pump blood, or, uh, sorry, a lot of different ways to, to show disease markers um, that not every test can pick up. So each test has its own uh, benefits, risks, and looks at its individual components, and that's what we're gonna talk about right now. My name is Dr. Philip Oob. I'm a functional medicine doctor here in Austin, and we're gonna talk about ways to test the heart and see how healthy your heart really is. So the number one way to test your heart to see if it really is healthy or not is by doing labs. That's one of the most non-invasive, easiest ways to do it. The number one thing the medical community do, is doing right now is they're testing cholesterol levels and if your cholesterol is high, they say you're at risk and if your cholesterol is low, it's at risk. They're not looking at the detailed panel. So I'm gonna show you what a detailed panel looks like and what are some of the markers you should be looking for, maybe some of the markers you should be asking your doctor about, and if your doctor is not looking at those markers, maybe you should look for a different doctor or find someone who can do the advanced markers. So this lab I'm using is Cleveland Heart Lab right now as an example. There are numerous labs out there. I by no means say that Cleveland's the only one that does this. But basically what we're talking about is the inflammatory cascade. So what happens when you go from a normal blood vessel, which is way over here, all the way to an abnormal blood vessel is cholesterol gets deposited in the bloodstream or the blood vessel. So why does that happen? That doesn't happen just because your cholesterol is too high. It needs inflammation. With inflammation, then the cholesterol starts depositing into the bloodstream. And you can see that because if you go back in time all the way to the beginning of this whole process, what you can see is that the very first steps are something that's called F2 isoprostanes, oxidized LDL, and then inflammation. That's the baby steps that starts the whole cholesterol plaque buildup over time. And what people don't realize is that you can test this now. You can find it in your blood. So before you get all the way to heart attack over here where you're developing a clot in the blood vessel and you're having chest pain and a heart attack right now and now you need a stent, there are markers all along the way that you can see develop over time. And I, this has been proven time and time again that if you reduce your risk of inflammation, then you reduce your risk of developing heart disease. Um, so let's go through a few markers and um, explain how they work and what they help with. So the first marker I wanna point out is this oxidized LDL. Oxidized LDL can be measured in the blood what it means is your LDL particles or your bad cholesterol particles are rusting. They're getting oxidized, just like metal turns to rust. These LDL particles are turning oxidized, which is rusting. Um, and so what's happening is as these particles become oxidized, they get damaged and then they start crashing into the blood vessel wall and they stick. And then once they stick, guess what? Your immune system shows up and says, hey, you're not supposed to be there. I'm gonna attack you and try to remove you. The problem is that when there's too much oxidized LDL, the, the white blood cells, when they show up to engulf the cholesterol, they eat so much cholesterol that they actually kill themselves. It's just death by eating too much cholesterol. Many Americans are trying to do that themselves. So what happens is as that process continues to go more and more inflammatory cells show up more and more white blood cells and basically that blood vessel just gets thicker and thicker and thicker until you till you basically develop a little pus pocket that pops open when that pus pocket pops open that's when you actually have a heart attack your blood vessels go from a hundred percent full to zero percent full wherever that clot happens a common misconception is that the more narrowed your arteries, the more likely you are to have a heart attack. Now, if you do have narrowed arteries, clearly you have disease, so you are at more risk for a heart attack. But the majority of heart attacks come from blood vessels that are not narrowed. The reason why is because a narrowed blood vessel is thick and dense and hardened and calcified, and it can't really rupture. The soft, fresh, squishy plaque is the ones that can rupture. You can tell if you've got soft, squishy plaque 
by checking these markers. Some of the other advanced markers are microalbumin, LPPLA2, and myeloperoxidase. If you have any of those markers elevated, then you know you're at risk. And so what this lab does is this lab can tell you exactly where your markers are. So this is a real person that I pulled up, and you can see at the top that their myeloperoxidase is in the green zone, their LPPLA2 is in the green zone, They've got a little bit of CRP elevation at 1.4, their oxidized LDL is good, and their F2 isoprostanes is fine. So if you go down to our graph where it showed the heart or the blood vessel, then you can kind of see that the only marker they have elevated is the CRP marker. So chances are they're in the early stages of blood vessel disease, and we need to work on reducing that inflammatory cascade so that there's less um, damage and less potential for future heart attacks. These two markers are so precise at predicting the possibility of heart attacks that you can track these and basically give yourself a percentage of like, I've got a 20, 30, 40% chance of having a heart attack in the next few years because that marker is elevated. So as soon as we reduce that marker, that says that the plaque is less soft and squishy. And so if it is still there, at least it's not soft and squishy. And so the risk of it rupturing is much less likely because as soon as that pus pocket pops, that's when you develop the heart attack. So the number one way, the easiest way to test if your heart is healthy or not is to find out your advanced inflammatory markers. But I wanna talk a little bit more about other ways that you can tell if your heart is healthy or not. So um, one way is called the calcium score. So a lot of people go get the calcium score. It's a CAT scan. I always like to warn people that it is radiation. But a calcium score doesn't tell you anything more than how many metal spots are around your heart. So it's called a calcium score, but they're just counting white spots. It's not always calcium that's deposited around the heart. If it's heavy metals like lead, mercury, arsenic, all those can build up in the system and stay there for years and decades. So just because your calcium score is elevated doesn't necessarily mean that um, you have atherosclerosis or hardened arteries. Now they are hardened because you have white spots there, which they're metal, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's calcium and atherosclerosis. If you've got an elevated calcium score, but a normal inflammatory panel, then that really is starting to warn us that there are some heavy metals there. Um, I had one of my physician colleagues in the ER uh, stop me outside when he looked at my website and saw some of the things I did. And he told me that he went through this process, that he was uh, much more overweight than he was now. Uh, I say that he's not overweight now. I mean, he was obese previously and he dropped a ton of weight. He went through a chelation protocol and he checked his calcium score before and after and it was so much better. And he still hasn't had a heart attack since then. So he's never had a heart attack because he managed his risk factors. So the power of the calcium score is good in the sense that it gives you a marker, but it's not really the end of the story. It doesn't tell you if there really is atherosclerosis. It just tells you how many calcium or heavy metals are in the blood vessels around the heart. So that's why that test has limited utility, plus it's got the radiation. So that's an easy way to tell about atherosclerosis. The next way is to do uh, the carotid IMT or the CIMT test, which measures the thickness of your carotid blood vessel. This is a harmless test. It's done with an ultrasound. It's super easy. It takes like 30 minutes to get done. And they plot your thickness on a graph that gives you a relative age compared to uh, the other population. So I did a video previously about this. One of my patients has had it done and showed uh, reversal of his disease over time. He started at age 82, or he, he was age 60 when he first got it done, but his blood vessel age was 82. Five years later, after doing a lot of work with the nutrition, lifestyle, and, and everything else, supplements, by age 65, his blood vessel age had actually reduced from 82 down to 73. He had reduced his blood vessel age by nine years, even though he got older by five. So technically, he reduced it by 14 years. Um, because if you were able to do all that backwards, it would, it would have worked a lot better. So, um, so the CIMT is another way to test, but once again, not the end of the story. It doesn't tell you about the blood vessels around the heart. If you're putting plaque here, chances are you're putting plaque everywhere. So it is a good test, but every test has its limitations. The next test is what's called an echocardiogram, and this one is frequently touted as more than it is. So frequently people come to see me and say, my doctor said my heart is as healthy as a horse, um, my echo was perfectly fine, it's pumping great. The, uh, the pumping function of the heart really doesn't start to suffer until um, there's been multiple heart attacks, and heart attacks are big enough to change the structural 
pumping of the heart. So while the echo is good at looking at valve and looking at structural function and pumping function, it doesn't tell you anything about the blood flow. You can have tons of inflammation and you can have a heart attack the very next day and the echo won't give you any signs that any of that is happening. So echoes are great, but know what you're testing for when you look at it. The next test is the stress test. So if you've ever done an exercise stress test, you've probably been told that you pass with flying colors and that you're as healthy as a horse. But the problem with the stress test is it can't really detect heart attacks that well. All the stress test can detect is, is one of your blood vessels narrowed and basically at extreme exercise, do you overwork the heart's ability to receive enough blood from that narrowed blood vessel? That is a different issue than a heart attack. So as the plaque builds up, your arteries do narrow, but as I said earlier in the video, that majority of heart attacks come from non-narrowed blood vessels, blood vessels that are less than 50% stenosed. And that's because by the time a blood vessel gets narrowed, that it's stiffened and it is unlikely to rupture. Once it's the bigger ones that are soft and squishy are more likely to rupture. So while an exercise stress test or a nuclear stress test or whatever kind of stress test may make you feel better about your heart attack risk, it's not really that great. And that's why they give you a, a timeline with it. Like, oh, if you have a normal stress test, you're good for one year or two years, your chances of having a heart attack are reduced but you can have a false positive on the stress test and then go for an angiogram. That's the next step. So the true gold standard for detecting atherosclerosis or plaque around the heart is called the angiogram. That's where they take a catheter and go in through your leg, most commonly sometimes through the wrist, um, but they most commonly go through the leg and they squirt dye around the heart and that's when they can tell if there's any narrowed blood vessels. Once again, that doesn't tell you if there's any active inflammation. And the active inflamed blood vessels are the ones that pop. Frequently, people would get an angiogram and say, yeah, you've got some narrowed blood vessels, you might need a stent. Um, but a stent only helps those blood vessels that are thickened and narrowed, not necessarily ones that are fresh with um, plaque, ready to rupture at any moment. That's why the stents are great at, at opening those blood vessels, but there's still risk of having heart attacks even when the stent is placed there. And frequently the heart attack is gonna happen somewhere else than the stent was placed. Because by angiogram, they cannot see actively inflamed blood vessels. They can only see dilated or closed, one of the two. So there's different ways to evaluate the heart. Um, the, there's, there's limitations and benefits to each one. There's risks with each one. The angiogram is clearly the most risky and blood testing is, is simplest, although EKG is technically a little simpler and less invasive than that. Um, but an EKG, so I haven't talked about EKGs, so an EKG, they're great, they determine the electrical conduction through the heart, but it only detects old heart attacks and brand new heart attacks. It can't detect your risk of having a heart attack, so just because you have a normal EKG and a normal echo doesn't tell you anything about your future risk of heart attack. The EKG can detect if you're having a heart attack right now, and it can detect if you've had one in the past, but it's not very good at detecting your future risk. So don't rely on an EKG either to determine your heart risk. This, the easiest, best way to determine your heart attack risk is with the lab testing, HSCRP, myeloperoxidase, LPPLA2, F2 isoprostanes, and oxidized LDL. You don't have to get all of those markers. Uh, if you can only get one of them, the HSCRP or the high sensitivity CRP is the best test to get. There's been um, drug trials using the HSCRP. Um, they've shown that if you can reduce your CRP that your heart attack risk goes down. So the, that's a very real way to find out what your heart attack risk is and, and get it reduced. When I first um, started getting into functional medicine, my CRP was around eight and now I've gotten it all the way down to one, but it's taken three years for me to get here. Um, it's not a fast process. So don't wait around, don't wait till you have your first heart attack to, to start making changes, change now. That being said, if you have had a heart attack and you're ready to change, it's time to change now because even though you have that atherosclerosis and that plaque buildup, if you can reduce the inflammation, then you reduce, you reduce your risk of future heart attack. So that's all I'm gonna talk about uh, as far as um, different ways to test the heart and fully evaluate it. Uh, this video was a little longer than I intended, but there's a lot of different ways to look at the heart and I just wanna make sure that you're not being told that your heart is as healthy as a horse when you're not really fully being tested. So uh, you can't know if you have disease if you don't test for it. So start looking guys. Hopefully this video was helpful. If you think it was helpful, share it with some friends or point someone out.